what is the view about you and low carbohydrate diets? Because, you know, I, 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 I've never heard you say anything that is uniquely uh, anti-low carb other than, you know, the stuff we've already talked about on the previous podcasts. Yeah. So what I always tell people is I'm like, how could I be anti-low carb? If you go to my, our, our nutrition coaching app, Carbon Diet Coach, two of the, two of the six settings are low carbohydrate. There's low carbohydrate and there's ketogenic. Yeah. So how could I possibly be low carb or anti-low carb? Yeah. And I think that this is just an example of, uh, I call this the Tim Tebow effect. <laughs> so, uh, but it's just like polarization. So do you remember when uh, Tim Tebow was playing NFL football? My hypothesis was there is very few people, there are very few people in the middle about Tim Tebow. Right. You either love him or you hate him. And the way this kind of comes up is like, if you watch this guy and you're like, yeah, you know, he's not really that good. He's got weird mechanics. He's more of a running back than he is a quarterback. And he's kind of preachy, but you know, he's all right. But then you see all these people saying he's the Heisman. He, you know, he's going to the playoffs. Like, well, you know, he's better than your quarterback. Like, you know, this, that you go, what are you talking about? Like his completion percentage is like 45%. How, how can you say he's good? Well, then you have the other side, which people like, like me, I actually was kind of a Tim Tebow fan. Cause I'm like, you know, he seems like a nice guy who works hard. Um, that maybe not the best genetics to be a quarterback, but like, you know, he's been successful. Like that's, that's admirable. And then you look over here and you, you see all these people going, he sucks. He's terrible. And it's like, well, he did win a playoff game, you know? So I think this happens in, with many different subjects. And even right, like we were talking about this the other day, you know, you're uh, a car guy. I'm not a car guy, mm -hmm. right? So I've posted many times. In fact, when we bought our, our new house, I'm going to take a picture of me with the car outside the house. It's going to be the greatest picture that ever goes up on my social media. Because I've still got my grad school car, which is a 2003 Alero. And I've just never, I just never felt the need to get rid of it, right? So I got this really dinky old car with me on the hood sitting outside this, you know, wonderful, you know, big house. And sure enough, I got like 1,500 comments. But some of the comments were, and I was talking about how basically saying, you know, my ability to delay gratification is what got me here. And uh, you can do it too. Like delaying gratification in anything is so essential for success in almost any goal. Because it's so crazy how in almost anything, whatever provides you like short-term relief or happiness almost always makes it worse in the long term and vice versa. But people would say, why do you, why do you hate people who buy nice cars? I'm like, where did I say I hate people buy nice cars? I never said that. You know, same thing with low carb. The, my messaging has consistently been, usually there'll be some kind of insane claim, you know, like calories don't matter or, you know, you can eat as much on low carb as you want, not gain fat. And then I'm like, well, here's citation, 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 low carb, does not appear to be better for fat loss than, you know, calorie protein equated uh, diets that are not low carb. But that means choose what you prefer because it's not worse. So by all means, like if you like low carb, go right ahead. I don't enjoy low carb, but I know many people that do. And so I think one of the reasons people get so tribal about this is they find something that worked for them and they then retroactively try to find the evidence to show that it's the best thing that there is. And which, which of the two landscapes, nutrition and exercise, do you think is more culty? My oh, impression is nutrition. Definitely nutrition. Yeah. Definitely nutrition. And, and, and do you think that that's because of the ubiquity of food in our lives and the fact that we all have almost equally a personal relationship with food, whereas not everybody exercises the same amount. And uh, do you think that that's? So there's two things, uh, especially here in America, we, we come from a Puritan background. And I think that this, this kind of thinking that anything that is pleasurable at all must be bad for you and you cannot have it and you should feel bad about it, right? So I think that causes people to get a little bit tribal in terms of like, I mean, I've had people like say horrible, like moral judgments because like I'll post me eating a bag of Skittles or something like that. You know, never mind the fact that I just went and trained for three hours, you know? Um, 
I think somebody like called me a disgusting sugar addict one time. <laughs> um, so that, that's, that's one part of it. I think it's the, the smaller part. I think the bigger part is what you just said. If it's funny, whenever I meet new people, I'm always kind of hesitant to, you know, if they don't know anything about me to tell them that, you know, I have a background in nutrition, PhD in nutrition. Cause usually one of a couple things happens. They either clam up real quick. Like if we're out to dinner and they get very self-conscious about what they're eating, which bro, I just ordered the fries. Like, you know, you're good. <laughs> um, I get, or I get like blitzkrieged with questions, but mostly people wanting me to validate what they already believe to be true. But if I was, if I sat down, I said, you know, I'm a theoretical astrophysicist. We might talk about space a little bit, but they're probably not going to question my beliefs or my, my opinions on string theory. Right. right. But I think because everyone eats and everyone knows something about their body, right or wrong, they have drawn certain conclusions about what they put in their body and what happens to their body. And so I think because of that, because everybody has an opinion about nutrition, it makes it really tough because people are already like just natively have certain beliefs. And we know how hard it is to change people's beliefs. There was a classic study. It was in politics. It was a classic study where they showed hard data. And this was for both parties. They would either refute a preconceived belief or uh, support it. I think one of them was um, uh, with, uh, I can't remember what they used for Republicans, but for Democrats, uh, the belief was that uh, I think George W. Bush stopped or outlawed funding for stem cell research or something like that. Um, the reality was he just stopped federal funding. He didn't outlaw it. So they, they showed people this, this, um, these facts. By the way, again, if I butchered that, I apologize to anyone watching, but I think that was it. They showed people these facts and it didn't matter. Like if, if they... Um, if they believed that he had outlawed it, even if they show them the facts that he didn't, they still, it still reinforced their pre-existing belief. It actually made their belief stronger. Hmm. And uh, the same thing was true for Republicans, by the way. So, <laughs> and I, I don't think it's a Republican or Democrat problem. I think it's a people problem, to be honest. And I think one of the benefits I had very early on in grad school was Dr. Lehman just absolutely dismantling so many beliefs I had, but then, but doing it in a way that wasn't judgmental or made me feel bad. And what I tell people now, it's like being wrong about something is a beautiful thing because if I'm already right about everything, then I'm already doing everything the best I can and I can't get better. But if I'm doing something, if I'm wrong about something, that's actually awesome because now I have something I can improve on. So now I tell people, I like being right, right? Like I'll do cartwells in my living room if I'm right. But if I'm wrong, I, d I don't really take that much offense to it because it's just data. It's not, there's no ethical judgment.